How you doing, man? Good. How about you, bro? Good, good. Before we start, I got you something. Oh. I'm gonna think shirts. Fuck yeah. What is this from? Which, what night is this from? Uh, December 10th. I don't know where it's exactly. <laughs> you guys threw your shirts all over. I think that's Frankie's. This this is either Ryan's or Frankie's. This I know is Donnie's for a fact. I don't know what happened to any of my shit from that night. That's hilarious. That's awesome. Thank you, dude. Hell yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> that's so funny. I wouldn't have known unless I saw the Fleetwood Mac because I know Donnie, you see, he still wears these all the time. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Hell yeah. Welcome, man. Oh, okay. okay. First question, man. Mm -hmm. How long have you been making music, as in, like, life, you know? Um, probably, like, well, I mean, I was attempting poorly, but, like, probably since I was, like, 13, 14. But I, w I was kind of a dilettante with it at that time because I didn't have, like, that much passion. or Well, I had a lot of passion, but I didn't have that much drive or, like, I, I didn't really, life wasn't a thing to me, you know? I was just more, it was just 13 having fun, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What, what like, motivated you for the first time in music? Like, what song, what artist, what movement, you know? Well, now that we're sitting right here, it was probably, because I have a funny story, mm -hmm. it was probably um, Acid Rap by Chance the Rapper that, like, that was, like, around the time that I probably would have been taking it seriously anyways, but that was, like, I guess for me, one of those first driving factors. Um... But me and my friends, we used to do a lot, a lot of acid mm. and shit. Um, and that album was like our, you know, holy grail. And that was, but anyways, we were here one night. It was like one of the first nights that we really started tripping balls. And the lake was running. So like the, the dam was going. It was like maybe three, four in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you ever heard Acid Rain by Chance the Rapper, but the uh, song starts and he says, uh, kicked off my shoes, tripped acid in the rain, yada, yada. So like we took off our shoes and we're like walking along in there and then a cop pulls up right there and he was like, what are you, long story short, he was like, what are you guys doing? And I was like, uh, I'll tell a story. My friend was like, Shams, we're staying and we're running, we're staying and we're running. It's like me and somebody else and we were like, we're, we're going to stay. So me and my other buddy who had like, he wasn't tripping, he was drinking, he drank like a whole bottle of Tito's that night. We walked up to him and the cop really kind of didn't want to be dealing with anything. And he was like, what are you guys doing? And just because I was just, being a jackass, I was like, oh, we just came down here, kicked off our shoes, which to me, I was like so excited in my head to be like inserting an acid rap <laughs> reference into like this interaction. But yeah, so a acid rap was probably like when I first really first started making music. He, he like said in a later interview that he like went into acid rap with like the concept overall was greatest album of all time. Mm -hmm. And I try to have like a piece of that with like every album that I approach, but that that first mixtape, I went in with the same uh, goal in mind. Probably influenced from what Acid Rap was because he he achieved that. Um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, speaking of like the, uh, your guys, like how was how did ordinary people come to be? Like, how did it start? Me and Ryan went to um, St. Mary's and Palms and Lakes together since we were in first grade. Mm -hmm. So we, like, had always wanted to start making music together and whatnot. And, you know, it was always kind of in the talks for us. And then in high school, that was, like, where I started making that mixtape was at Ryan's house. Donnie, I met, I think, going into my sophomore year of high school, I sold him weed. And Ryan sold Frankie weed. And, like our friend groups all kind of merged because when Donnie came into the high school, he would like throw parties at his house and shit. So like we bonded over music or whatever. And then everybody kind of became in the fr same friend group over time. And like, we just kind of knew that like that the band would form eventually. And that was like around 2018, 2019. Just right around the uh, release of the, the first demo. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, the demo, yeah, that was, um, I think we did that in, like, January of 2019. Mm -hmm. so, so, it was around then, yeah. Yeah. Well, as a lead singer myself in my own band, I treat, I think of my, my members, my friends as brothers, sisters, and siblings that we just came together. Mm-hmm. 
How are your relationships between each? Kind of what you said, um, you know, a little bit. Also, at the same time, it's also like we're married a little bit, you know. It's, I don't know. Um, we're definitely all brothers. And I think that's why we work so well together too, is because like, we're not just there because like we met and we play music together is that we were friends before the band. Mm -hmm. So it's, we worked so well together and it's just, uh, I don't know. It seems, it seems so like meant to happen just the way it all, we, we all were in each other's lives so naturally and shit. Mm -hmm. um, we're definitely, we're definitely like brothers. That's great, man. I'm definitely the annoying brother, too. <laughs> uh, I know I feel the same way. I, every time I, perf I practice with the band, I, I like start just start like rapping like a verse from like Juice World or like Lil Uzi. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then, like we got to get into the song. Come on. Yeah. Well, I guess we're all we all have our annoying traits. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we were talking about uh, Chance, uh, Chance the Rapper. Yeah, Chance the Rapper. Um, what are your influences? And how did those impact your voice, your uh, sound, and your attitude in yourself and in your band? I don't know if any like singer directly influenced me to sound like them. Maybe they did, and I still just haven't made the connection yet. Um, I think every singer that I was obsessed with at one point or another was doing themselves to the utmost degree, and that's where I got that from. You know, was to just like see what I could do. Um, my influences, do you, do you mean like before I started or right now, would you say? Before you started and, and while, you know, around like, that. Yeah. Um, I mean, before I started making music, I, like, I was a little classic rock. I was like a rockist when I was a kid. You know, I thought like no music would ever, um, could ever outmatch the glory of classic rock. You know, <laughs> yeah. like, nothing was, nothing was superior to classic rock, you know, over time. Then, then like, high school came and I started getting into rap um and then that kind of like just changed everything of what I was listening to mm -hmm. but country music was always a huge part of my life too mm -hmm. my dad who um he doesn't live in New Jersey he lives in upstate New York uh, my whole family does up there like it's like farmland type area you know they're all that's where I got a uh, my big country taste too but it, it doesn't really come out as much I think more so in like just songwriting than anything Yes, performative yes. or like sonically no same here i mean like i'm mexican i don't really listen to a lot of like american country but when yeah. i listen to like mexican rancheras or norteñas that's yeah. the, that's the same thing just yeah. different vibes yeah. yeah exactly man i've yeah. actually been listening to a lot of sierra farrell which i don't know if you know her but she does a lot of like southwest it like it's like super like spanishy and latin -y. yeah <laughs> yeah um but yeah i guess when I first started, my influences were kind of, um, I don't want to say they were more immature, but like I was very much focused on like how well people were rapping and just how like cool and relevant it was. Um, so I guess at the time, like when we first made Ordinary People, I wouldn't really, I purposely was like staying away from rock music just because like I was trying to, to make it modern and rock music, there's not like a lot of innovative rock, I guess, to begin with. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really see it as cool either. So when we first started, I was I was more into um like. And don't get me wrong when I say that that like that that takes away anything from these artists or that like I'm not even as good as them. Like I would never. I, yeah. I feel like I'm rambling. But, That's um, fine. Um, like Mac Miller, I was super into like Kanye West, and like that whole like my beautiful dark twisted fantasy um. Glorification of, like, tragedy. Mm -hmm. I think I was like really obsessed with for a while but and that like led to how i tried to flesh out my uh persona or whatever yeah you know i wasn't doing it obviously i wasn't famous or like there wasn't any of that tragedy but i think taking that influence and in, like big grandiose albums and music with like mac miller's rapping and drug use and everything like that because i also like to do drugs but one, I thought it, it gave you such a, a, it was like you were checking boxes of what a real artist was or a real cool artist or the kind that I wanted to be at least. Mm -hmm. And two, it did seem like it, it added something to like their creativity and shit or that they were extracting their like the most creative self, creative 
they were extracting the most out of their creative glands when they were like high or whatever so no um, i i sometimes struggle with that myself like yeah. i'm like i listen to juice world i listen to peep i listen to um other um like my chemical romance i'm like oh i have to do drugs to get the um the f- juices flowing and if i'm in these i can't stop because what if i'm going to um yeah stop the creative uh, creative um juices yeah i think g- creativity in general just um for me at least it has to do with perspective and honestly like like my, i don't want to say my inner monologue but that's how i get a lot of my ideas it's just like having my own conversation or dialogue in my head throughout my day. And then when I, either something I said was cool or I get an idea and then then it kind of flows from there. If I remember to write it down, (laughs) which is, you know, I I, I write a lot of stuff down, but it seems like the ones that I don't write down are the ones that like get at me the most or that seem to me like they would have been my best idea, but I was too distracted or lazy or whatever it was to not do it. Yeah. Um, But I guess... After a while, then I started to like it, it let myself get back and get back into rock and everything like that. And I never stopped listening to rap music either. Kendrick Lamar was, was like a huge influence on me. Um, and then I guess I stopped wanting to like, not because of any artists in particular. I think it's just general growth and like seeing what I thought like one music that lasted the test of time but also like i don't want to be immature and rapping about drugs and women problems or whatever whatever forever like it just there's so much more to life and there's so much i guess that's where like my religious beliefs come into is because like that religion is larger than life it's like the biggest thing that there is you mm-hmm. know and I'm, i was raised religious and i still am like spiritual to a degree and i guess that combined with like just growing up with age it was like what what am i doing like just trying to make cocaine sound cool in a bar 80 different times in 80 different ways. Um, So then I guess, I don't know. I fluctuate though what I listen to a lot is is the short answer to this. I'm just fucking, I don't even need drugs to fucking ramble, Jesus Christ. (laughs) But, uh, you know, I went through an Amy Winehouse phase for a while. Tyler Childers is probably like my favorite artist right now. Probably will be for a while. Big outcast phase. You know, I go I go through phases with um artists I'm obsessed with while like keeping it's like it's like I'm in school and I have a major, but then I have all the other classes that I go to. That's kind of how I listen to music because I have like the one people that I'm really, really into and then all like the uh, side characters or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So same here. Yeah. But yeah. 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 <laughs> um I've been following you guys since 2019, since the first demo. How do you feel the uh, the um, the initial reception to your, the demo and your first fans to compared to now? Well, aside from cool people like you, when the first demo first came out, it really was like it, the only reason it made like sh- any sort of shock waves locally is because of the people we knew and it was like oh they just put music out like they just made music it's not like so we didn't have like actual marketing behind it for it to reach anybody that we didn't really know personally Mm -hmm. aside from people that we did know personally reposting it and then you know maybe like that's how you saw it or something like that or i guess you followed frankie and stuff so that's how you um found out about us in the first place so at, at that time it's kind of um which I think everybody who starts making music learns like one way or another, if you start doing it at like a younger age, is that like, it's cool to people, or it's new and exciting to people at first. I shouldn't say cool. Cause a lot of times they're listening. Well, a lot of times they don't care. Mm -hmm. Second off, I guess it's like, oh shit, he put out music. Like it's not like they're looking for something to laugh at, but. I mean, it's kind of instinctive. It's not because they're bad people. Everybody does it, you know? It's just a um, little voice in your head. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess I don't really know where I was going with that. But um, I think it's just like a big social thing that like people check it out for the first time. And then if you don't suck, then like people will kind of like um, either support it or just, you know, kind of just exit following you in life or whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. Kind of feel like that was a bad answer. That one, if you want to re-ask that, I, yeah, it's I, fine. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a good answer. I mean, like, mm. I understand that completely because even like when I was um, 
I was doing something before um, pursuing music. I wanted to do, uh, wanted to do art and animation. I posted a lot of p photos of mm -hmm. my drawings and everything. Everybody was like, oh, that's great. Over a while, everybody stopped liking the stuff. I'm like, damn. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's, I guess that's the, the this follow-up answer is like, how is it now? And now it's a lot of people, or a lot more people that are like, we don't know personally, but they're in the local music scene or now uh, they've seen like a TikTok or a reel or something and that now they're into our music and shit. And that's, that's like, that's obviously the growth that you're asking about. Um, I just don't think it's at the, you know, at the level that any of us would like it to be at, but we don't really have anybody but ourselves to blame in that regard. So not even, know? not yeah. even to blame. Yeah. Just, it's just, you have, you just have to um, feel it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What was your favorite show of, uh, as of your recollection of these whole years and um, any fucked up or a crazy moment? Um, my favorite show is probably our album release show. That was that was awesome. Um, that or the show that you got the shirts from. Um, any crazy or fucked up moments? I don't know. I told the story a million times, but that night I poured beer on Frankie's pedal board and I broke a pedal and shit oh, just because yeah. I thought it would. Because we saw a guy, Andy Frasco, like a week or two before, and his old band is pouring beer and shit on each other. So I just, I don't know, I was drunk and I thought it'd be cool. But then it didn't really wind up being cool. Um, I don't know. Because a lot of these moments, I guess, like, I, I'm, like, there for, I guess they just, uh, it's not like, I, it's almost like I'm blacked out. It's almost like I'm blackout drunk and I really only remember them unless, like, I remember them. Unless someone's like, yo, you remember when this and that happened? And I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't know if I can remember. I guess people singing my lyrics is really the craziest thing. Just just the, the, the calling back in certain songs. Calling back in certain songs or, like, me dropping out and then hearing, like, people sing it for me and shit like that. Like, that's that's really cool. That's cool, man. Yeah. That's cool. So, um, I... I was going through your stories over the years, and um, how was that Ellen lawsuit? Oh, that was like our first joke as a band. Yeah, yeah. that was funny. I that's <laughs> yeah. I don't even know. That was so stupid. I don't know why we did that. It's so cringy looking back. It's funny too. That happened like a month or two before like people actually started canceling Ellen too. So it was it was a crazy time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we did not win. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. We 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 lose some. We win some. We lose some. Yeah. 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 Um, I, a lot of bands have a lot of things to um, cheer before their before their show. Panic be, uh, be, before they were problematic. Um, they had a uh, shot every show. What's your uh, pre-show tradition? I don't really know if we have a pre-show tradition aside from like just panicking about where everything is or where everybody is or you know this and that. Um. We kind of don't have a, maybe we do, I don't know. If we have like, if I have an area where no one's really looking at me, I like to do some push-ups or something like that to get blood flowing, or, you know. Um, I mean, that's a tradition either way. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I guess we kind of just get together. We, we like, we'll have the set list done and we'll practice it, but we'll wait till like a, an hour or two before we'll sit together and write the set list. I guess we just kind of hang out and bullshit before the show. Yeah, that's maybe good. maybe drink a beer. I don't really like to drink beer or anything before the show. It's just I don't know. I feel like it's um could just make me burp honestly, <laughs> and it's annoying if I'm like taste taking a breath for a high note or something. No, yeah, I feel that same way with eating before a show. Yeah, yeah, like, that too. It, it fills you up, and you're like, I can't hit a note or yeah. I can't go low enough. Yeah. Um, what's up for next for you? You know, what's what's up for you and um and OP? Um. Well, we're releasing um, a live album, a couple live singles, um, and an acoustic EP of songs, new songs, and a couple, sun, well, one Sun and Moon song um, for an acoustic EP. And then after that, we're going to be looking, trying to just um, buckle down, do a little tour or something, and um, just gear up to get in a good position to have our third album be something that we could put out with the record deal or something like that, you know? Yeah. And, you know, in a far better position in terms of popularity than we are right now, you know? Yeah. Um, Not to sound ungrateful that, you know, because like I said, like it, even no matter 
how small the room is having people sing your like lyrics back just feels like really crazy and it's awesome yeah um but yeah yeah any um anything in the love department in your life um yeah yeah i guess a couple things it's going pretty good um yeah <laughs> you don't want to put too much i yeah. know i know um see. you said touring um what's it called um what are your um your um dream places like states or shows you know where venues um i think right now we're trying to we might be playing some place called the smell in la which is that's that's really where i would really like to go first is that's you know i've always just wanted to go to california and los angeles and shit i'm sure it might not be everything that i've built it up to be in my head or whatnot but yeah I'm, I'm, that's where i'm really really excited to go great great yeah. I can't um, wait to see you at uh, Sayerville in the Star uh, Starland Ballroom. Hell yeah, hell yeah, that would be fucking sick, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I guess one thing for projects, too, is me and Phil from The Spins are making um, my last rap project, um, which is called Irish Coffee, which is also the name of our duo. Um, it's going to be like 16 songs long, and it's featuring pretty much everybody that we want to work with in like the local scene and stuff like that bands that we've played with you know guitar players singers doesn't really matter who um and you know kind of be like a little time stamp of uh our local scene now and it's just mainly for me to tie that little bow on making rap music for a while yeah for probably maybe forever i don't really know you know we'll see that's good that's unless good. we make irish coffee too or something like that yeah <laughs> yeah 